We are due. Forget Yogi Bear. Okay, forget Old Faithful. It's on sitting on top of a sleeping giant. It could destroy the United States as we know it. Sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it could literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. In the Western U.S., there's a dormant giant. It occasionally stirs, but it hasn't woken up in about 70,000 years. When it eventually does, it might unleash an unprecedented display of power. Yellowstone, with its stunning attractions, has always been a magnet for excitement, drawing in crowds of visitors. Now, according to renowned scientist Mikio Kaku, there's an added reason to be cautious as you explore. The fact that Yellowstone National Park sits on an active supervolcano raises the concern of a potential eruption. Is the Yellowstone volcano risky? Can we survive if it erupts? Let's delve into what's happening at the National Park and whether there's anything we can do to prevent it. Yellowstone, the world's oldest national park, isn't just a gem for the United States. Opening its doors in 1872, it sprawls across 3,472 square miles spanning three states. About three million people visit each year to enjoy the stunning natural scenery, including the old faithful geyser, hiking trails, mountain peaks, and hot springs. The park also hosts diverse wildlife like grizzly bears, moose, elk, beavers, and bighorn sheep. Beneath the surface of this haven for nature lovers hides another natural wonder that could pose a threat, the Yellowstone Supervolcano. Miles below the park's surface, this supervolcano is a significant source of granitic magma. For outdoor enthusiasts and the nearby residents, a full eruption would be devastating news. While this magma chamber has erupted in the past, with the last one at Pitchstone Plateau occurring about 70,000 years ago, most Yellowstone eruptions have been smaller lava flows. Yet the slim chance of catastrophic super eruptions is why Yellowstone attracts significant attention. A super eruption is when a volcano explodes with a magnitude of 8 or more on the volcano explosivity index and ejects at least a thousand cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of material. This massive event could bury Texas under 5 feet of debris. Even the biggest eruptions were used to are much less powerful than these super eruptions. Underneath the Yellowstone supervolcano lies a heated area of molten or semi-molten rock called magma. This magma flows into a chamber or reservoir 6 to 10 kilometers below the park, causing the ground to swell. As the magma cools and hardens, the ground collapses. Volcanologists, who've been watching since 1923, observe a 25-centimeter rise in the ground between 2004 and 2009. However, in 2010, the ground started sinking. Some experts, including Mikio Kaku, speculate about the possibility of Yellowstone erupting soon due to its recent gradual growth. Concerns arise about the eruption's potential intensity. What would happen if Yellowstone starts shaking tomorrow is the big question. On June 13, 2022, a 500-year flood hit Yellowstone with the northern areas getting 7.5 to 9.5 inches of rain and snowmelt combined in just 24 hours. The north entrance road from Mammoth Hot Springs, Wyoming, to Gardner, Montana, and three sections of the northeast entrance road between Lamar Valley and Cook City's Silvergate, Montana, were severely damaged by the flood. The park swiftly fixed wastewater lines, restored power within 48 hours, and planned for recovery and the eventual resumption of operations. Nine days after the flood on June 22, 2022, the park's South Loop reopened. Throughout the summer, more road and backcountry trail sections opened as repairs progressed. Yet recent underground activity sparked speculation about the potential eruption's intensity. The volcano has risen at the fastest rate observed in the last 10 years, and Yellowstone experiences 1 to 3,000 earthquakes annually. Most are magnitude 3 or less, making them nearly undetectable, but aiding scientists in understanding the magma chamber's expansion speed. 
An uptick in shaking and rattling suggests a recent influx of magma into the reservoir. Forecasting Yellowstone's activity is challenging for geologists due to limited examination opportunities. Examining the volcano's distant past provides some clues. Geological data indicates three massive eruptions in the last 2.1 million years, occurring at intervals of 600,000 to 800,000 years. The last major event, around 640,000 years ago, left evidence throughout the park and thousands of kilometers of the surrounding area, according to volcanologists. A big chunk of the continental United States got covered in volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other debris from past eruptions. Some of this stuff was even found as far as Louisiana. After each of these blow-ups, the Yellowstone supervolcano kind of collapsed in on itself, swallowing up everything around it, trees, mountains, and all. The pits formed by this whole event are called calderas. In Yellowstone, if there's an eruption forming a caldera, it's a serious natural threat. Scientists say the latest Yellowstone explosion was a thousand times more powerful than the famous 1980 Mount Street Helens eruption that messed up a bunch of land in Washington and Oregon and took the lives of 56 people and thousands of animals. The last time the Yellowstone supervolcano blew its top, it shot up a dangerous mix of hot ash, molten rock, and deadly gases thousands of meters into the air way back when. The whole continent probably went pitch black. Fast streams of scorching rock bits and gases, called pyroclastic flows, zoom through the area super fast, burying or crushing anything in their path. The once beautiful landscape got toasted for miles by magma spewing from the earth. The Yellowstone caldera, which is 50 kilometers wide and 70 kilometers long, still has some leftovers from the most recent eruption in a place known as the Lava Creek Tuff. You can still see the thick volcanic mess that stuck around after the blow-up. Geologists have found proof of at least 47 super-eruptions in Earth's history, showing that Yellowstone isn't the only supervolcano globally. The latest occurred around 26,000 years ago at Lake Taupo in New Zealand. A significant Toba eruption happened 74,000 years ago, potentially triggering a severe 6- to 10-year global winter impacting the human species. While not a strict rule, Earth typically sees a super eruption every 100,000 years. What could a Yellowstone eruption look like? A minor one might involve lava flows and a normal volcanic explosion, likely triggered by earthquakes in a specific park area as magma rises. For a larger super eruption, warning signs would be more evident. Michio Kaku suggested widespread earthquake activity across the entire park before an eruption. It could take weeks or months for these earthquakes to fracture rocks above the magma. Imagine a super eruption, a thousand times more powerful than a usual volcanic event, spewing 240 cubic miles of material for weeks or months with prolonged activity in the park. Lava flows might be limited to a 40-kilometer circumference, but volcanic ash, a mix of shattered rock and glass, would cause the most damage, spreading kilometers into the air and across the nation. Scientists discovered that the eruption would create an umbrella cloud expanding evenly in all directions, surprising us based on past ash deposits and advanced modeling the northern Rockies could potentially be buried under three feet of ash in a super eruption, causing severe damage to major parts of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. Some ash would also fall on the Midwest, with less reaching the coasts, depending on the season and weather. Any of these scenarios would be terrible. Ash and debris might not sound harmful, but it only takes three to four feet to wreak havoc on infrastructure, buildings, and public transit. Lives would be lost, air traffic halted, and even a small amount of ash can be deadly for respiratory systems, make driving dangerous, and harm crops and animals. Most of North America would have to ground airplanes. Predicting a volcanic eruption is possible based on preceding earthquakes, and despite Yellowstone having many quakes each year, the ones before an eruption are distinct. Evacuations would be necessary as it becomes evident that the park and nearby villages are destroyed. 
lava flows could help communicate the Yellowstone volcano's message. While not as far-reaching as ash, lava is likely to harm a maximum of 50 miles of Yellowstone National Park. Additionally, volcanic eruptions bring an unexpected consequence. A significant temperature drop due to sulfur aerosols reflecting sunlight, impacting the world's climate. The exact amount of ash and debris released during a Yellowstone eruption is unpredictable. If a Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, it could release particles into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and causing a significant drop in temperature for several years. While this might seem beneficial given the current Earth temperature, the sudden cooling could have disastrous effects on crop and agricultural production, fundamentally altering the planet. The eruption process involves molten rock beneath the surface melting due to heat from the Earth's core. This creates a mix of magma, rocks, vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases, causing pressure to force the ground into a dome shape with fissures around the borders. Over thousands of years, the accumulated mixture would explode when the pressure is released through fractures, spreading magma across the park. A 10-foot coating of molten ash might extend 1,000 miles away, instantly causing casualties and sealing off entrances from the ground. Rescue efforts would be challenging, similar to the difficulties faced during the 2010 Iceland volcano eruption. Ash would block ground entrances, and the release of ash and gases into the atmosphere could halt most air transport. Comparisons to past volcanic events, like Pinatubo in 1991, which temporarily lowered Earth's temperature, highlight the potential impact. The Tambora eruption in 1815 caused cooling significant enough to harm global crops and potentially lead to famines in some regions. Visualizing the scale of a super-volcanic explosion is a challenge. Many remember Mount Street Helen's 1980 eruption, which sent ash across the United States and smaller particles worldwide. However, the debris from that event was only about a tenth of a cubic mile. Comparing this to Yellowstone's supervolcanic history, the earliest eruptions produced nearly 900 cubic miles of debris, creating the three calderas in Yellowstone National Park millions of years ago. As for the likelihood of a super eruption in Yellowstone today, there are no current signs of an impending event. While earthquakes occur in Yellowstone Park and the ground rises and falls, this is considered normal. The annual odds of a Yellowstone super eruption are extremely low, at 0.00014, even lower than the chance of a civilization threatening asteroid impact. However, predicting Yellowstone's eruptions isn't foolproof, as there's no guaranteed cycle or imminent eruption. Super eruptions will happen in the future, but whether Yellowstone will experience one is uncertain. Volcanoes eventually fade out, and the opposing forces of rising heat from below and relative cold from the surface act on Yellowstone's magma chamber. Theoretically, if the heat diminishes, the chamber could freeze and transform into a solid granite body. Additionally, the Yellowstone hotspot is gradually moving to the northeast, and the North American tectonic plate is shifting southwest over it. In time, the hotspot might leak Yellowstone's foundation, potentially putting an end to the supervolcano there. It's worth noting that a second supervolcano could form much farther northeast, but this would take a million years or longer. So that seems enough for today's video. If you found it informative and interesting, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content.